I am Dr. Mara Lipsky. I am an assistant professor at the University of Detroit Mercy. I am author on nine peer-reviewed scientific publications. Recently received my PhD as a National Science Foundation graduate research fellow. I'm an Amgen Scholar alumna and served a year in Macedonia as a Fulbright Scholar. Would you believe it if I told you that at the age of 18, I knew for certain that I was going to be a professional ballerina? I knew for certain I would never attend college, let alone continue my education into graduate school, get a PhD. This is the story of how I redesigned my identity from ballerina to biochemist. At the age of 14, I moved away from my home and family in Carson, Michigan to attend Canada's National Ballet School in Toronto, Ontario. When I was young, I always loved ballet. I started dancing at the age of four. I remember idolizing the older girls at my dance studio who moved so beautifully and had such grace when they walked on stage. I used to daydream about dancing in front of an audience and moving them to tears. To me, performing and watching ballet was like reading a good book. I got lost in the story. So being given the opportunity to attend a professional ballet school was a dream come true for me. Now, attending a professional ballet school for all four years of high school likely isn't something that many of you are familiar with. So I'll give you a brief glimpse into what my life was like back then. Some high schoolers go to prom. Some high schoolers go to football games. I wasn't able to do any of those things. I had ballet and it consumed my entire life. My classmates and I would wake up early, put our school uniforms on, and tie our hair tightly on tops of our heads into a bun. We'd go to about five hours of academic classes in the morning. Following that, changing into our leotards and tights, and do about three to five hours of ballet or cross training in the pool. At the end of the day, we'd head home to the dorms to study, do homework, and prepare for the next day. Those four years have some of the most wonderful and formative experiences for me. I learned self-sufficiency when I had to plan and time manage my day without the help of my parents. I had to learn the determination it required to succeed academically while training at Canada's top ballet school. I also learned what true passion is. I remember preparing for a spring performance of La Sophie. I loved every second of rehearsal. I just loved the challenge of memorizing the choreography and the story, letting the emotion take over me so that when I stepped on stage, the time would fly by. Performing on stage was my very first love. Those four years were also the hardest four years of my life. I was living away from my supportive family during my formative years. I spent four years staring at myself in a mirror every single day, wearing nothing but a leotard and tights, always looking for something to perfect, never once accepting the fact that I might already be good enough. I also spent most of those four years depriving myself of the foods that I craved, which is most foods because, to be honest, I love food. <laughs> Ballet is an artistic endeavor, but it is very much controlled by aesthetic. So the combination of my perfectionist personality and the requirement to have a very specific body type ate away at much of my physical body and my self-confidence until both were quite changed. I had entered ballet school full of excitement for ballet and with a self-confidence that was unshakable. But after four years of self-critique and unchecked perfectionism, I remember a teacher walked up to me and asked, what happened to your fiery passion? It had burned out. I had neglected to properly fuel my body, my self-confidence, and my passion for ballet. So in December of 2008, I had decided that it was not a mentally or physically healthy thing for me to continue to pursue a career in ballet. So I packed up my things, moved back home to Michigan, and prepared for college. 
the next nine months, and really the next four years after that, I spent redesigning my identity. I was no longer a ballerina. I was no longer defined by my love for dance or by the way my body looked. I was lost as I entered into my first year at Kalamazoo College. I found some comfort in my science classes. I had loved math and chemistry and biology in high school, so becoming a chemistry major was the next logical step. After two semesters of general chemistry and getting some pretty good grades, I was approached by a professor and asked to join her research lab. I had never considered doing research before, but I figured it couldn't hurt, and if nothing else, something on my resume. So my summer after my freshman year, I joined the lab of Dr. Laura Furge doing drug metabolism research. The thought processes and the techniques required for biochemical research were completely foreign to me. One summer, I walked into her office with some data that looked completely unexpected. Dr. Furge told me that rather than the data being incorrect, it was actually telling us something that we didn't yet understand. That was an amazing moment to me. I thought I had failed. But really what had happened is an experiment that I thought had failed had been a learning moment, had opened up a bigger arena for understanding. More questions could be asked. More research directions could be found. I didn't have to be perfect to be a biochemist. During high school, I had loved the mental and physical challenge of learning hours of new choreography. Research became the same thing to me. All the hours of thinking of new questions to ask, new research directions to pursue. My newfound love for scientific discovery became the same thing for me. And because of this, I continued research into graduate school at the University of Illinois. There, I spent four years developing an anti-cancer drug towards <coughs> clinical trials and along the way, getting a lot of data that I did not understand at all at first. Those four years were spent doing so many experiments that failed. They mostly failed. Those four years were also the time in my life where I learned more than I ever have doing anything else. It was also during those four years that I realized my true identity. Through all those hours of failed experiments, through all the time reading primary literature and maybe not trying to fall asleep during that, and through all that time sitting at the bench wondering what story my data was trying to tell, I was there realizing my identity. It hadn't changed at all since I was a ballerina. I am a lifelong learner. Thank you.